Hey there everybody, it's Tim from Full Spectrum Laser. Now a lot of our first time customers go for our Muse 3D Hobby Laser for its convenient size and ease of use, but there's one feature in particular that seems to be the driving force behind its popularity, the 3D camera. Now, a lot of hobby lasers these days have cameras so you can line up your design to your material. But it's also kind of fueled the misconception that you need a camera to line up your jobs. We've had more than a few customers that have wanted to upgrade to our Pro Series machines but have been hesitant to do so because they don't have cameras. That's why today I'm going to walk you through getting the most out of your perimeter function. First things first, we need some material. For the purpose of this demo, I found some wood that already had some projects cut out of it. That way, we can use the perimeter to position our design in an attempt to not waste material. Next, we'll need to connect to RE3. Once we're connected, we're going to go into settings and make sure we're in relative mode. Now when working with a camera, your machine needs to be in absolute mode, so the location of your designs coincide with the location on the camera capture. But since we're not using the camera, we can switch to relative mode which will give us a few advantages. The largest of which is that we don't need to worry about where we're positioning our designs. Once in relative mode, our designs will start from wherever the laser head is, regardless of where our design is in the software. We actually have a whole video about the difference between absolute and relative mode. I'll be sure to put a link in the description. Next, we'll draw a square. I'm just gonna make sure it's an appropriate size that'll fit in our little piece of material. After that, we'll press the perimeter button. Now since the perimeter and the shape of our design are both squares, this is a perfectly accurate perimeter. It shows us exactly where our design will be. And since we're in relative mode, rather than moving our design in the software, I can just move our material to line up with the perimeter. Here's where it can get tricky. I'm going to swap out our square for a circle. Now the perimeter will always be a rectangle. It basically follows the bounding box that surrounds your entire design. So when you're using an organic or otherwise odd shape, like a circle, the perimeter can only show you so much. See? It's tracing a square. But we're making a circle. But that's okay. We have one more trick up our sleeve. Even though the perimeter is going beyond the edges of our material, we're still probably okay since it's just the corners. The actual design is a circle, so we should be good. But just to make sure, what we can do is just run the job with the lid open. I'll set our speed to 100 and set more than one pass and press play. Since your lid is open, your laser won't fire. See that? We're still well within our material. This is just a nice little trick you can use to get a more accurate perimeter. Now cuts are easy, but engravings are a bit different. Since most images people use for engraving don't have vector data, there's no way to get the laser to trace the shape of a raster design. But that's okay, we'll do it ourselves. Here we have our trusty Atari logo. It's sort of a weird shape, so it'll work well for this demo. It also looks like it'll fit perfectly into our little area of material here. So now, all we're gonna do is take our pen tool and make our own outline. Please forgive me, I'm currently using a trackpad, so my outline isn't going to be perfect. And that's okay, it doesn't have to be. I'm just using it to get close. I'm trying to keep my outline pretty close to the edges of the design so we get a pretty accurate perimeter. Here I'm just using the subselect tool to rein in my curves a bit. And there we go. Not perfect, but close enough to get an idea of where my engraving will be. Next, be sure to turn your engraving's visibility off. We don't want the laser to try and engrave with the lid open. The laser won't fire and we'll just be sitting there waiting for it to get to the vector part. Nobody has time for that. Now we can press the perimeter button, but again, it's only going to trace the bounding box, this guy right here. And as you can see, our bounding box is beyond the material, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the design is. To test that theory, we'll do what we did before with the circle. Make sure our speed is 100, set a couple passes, leave our lid open, and press play. And there you go. It'll fit no problem. Now just for the sake of demonstration, if you're not super good or familiar with the pen tool, you can use the freehand tool instead. It'll create a lot more nodes, and it might slow your perimeter down a tiny bit, but it serves the same purpose. So I'll delete our pen tool outline and select the freehand tool. Again, I'm using a trackpad, so this isn't going to look great, but it should be close enough. Oh, come on. 
and okay it kind of has a crown now but it's close enough so same as last time we'll turn off visibility for the actual logo and run the outline with the lid open now we'd never want to cut this it's got a bunch of overlaps and loops from my beautiful trackpad job but again all we're doing is checking to make sure our design will fit on our material so that's pretty rough but it worked exactly how we wanted now make sure you delete or turn off visibility of your outline before you run your job. We don't want it cutting out that trackpad monstrosity. I hope this helps make the Muse Core or the Pro Series machines a bit less daunting and shows how easy it can be to use a laser without a camera. Now I love the Pro Series machines. They're extremely similar to the machines that I learned on. And I'm so used to using them that I'm not really interested in a camera feature. That said, if you're looking to upgrade to a larger machine, but the cameras become a vital part of your workflow, that's okay. We have a machine called the Muse Titan. It has all the features of the Muse 3D, including the camera, with a Pro Series size workspace. So if you guys have any questions about the perimeter function on anything else, the Muse Titan, post them down in the comments or reach out on social media. But until next time, keep making.